a school lunch. Now I spit a 16 straight with no punch. Is this thing on? One, two, one, two. Hey guys, what's happening? It's Norm Schriever. Have a really fun podcast today. I have one of my old friends, Carrie Williams. I've known Carrie for almost 20 years now. And actually, she was the one who first got me into the sport of boxing and taught me how to box and all the basics uh, way back in the early 2000s in Sacramento, California. Carrie actually owned Primetime Boxing there, and now she owns a really cool club called The Stables in Los Angeles. Uh, she's also been a amateur and pro boxer and an Olympic-level boxing coach and a brand advocate for Everlast and contributed to uh, Live Strong and a lot of other big brands. So Carrie's really amazing, and even though this is about boxing, I talk to her a lot about business as well because she's always been just an incredibly savvy marketer and a real hustler. So without further ado, enjoy this podcast with Carrie Williams. Okay, well, yeah, I'm here with Carrie Williams, the uh, former heavyweight champ. She knocked out Mike Tyson once. No, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> but Carrie is uh, amazing, an incredible <sighs> entrepreneur, an incredible boxer, um, and an advocate of the sport, and the person who actually taught me boxing the first time a million years ago. So Carrie, thanks for being on. Thank you, Norm. I'm really excited to, to sit and chat with you about some boxing and some business. Yeah, boxing and business. There you go. And <laughs> that's a good segment because one of your one of your brands is boxing and barbells, huh? Yes, yes. Some boxing and weight training. You gotta do them both together. You gotta do them both together. There you yeah. go. Well, if you want, um, if you don't mind, why don't you give us a little rundown of like your background in the sport of boxing? Sure. Uh, so about 22 years ago, I opened my first boxing club and I actually wasn't a boxer. I wasn't um, a coach. I was actually not into fitness at all. I could barely run two blocks. So, really? uh, and I, 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 I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, most people don't. <laughs> I was the girl in PE class that didn't want to dress down or do any activity. I was a complete nerd in school. So anyways, I graduated from college in with an environmental science degree, of course. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I figured out I didn't want to work for the government. And in Sacramento, being the capital of California, uh, it seemed like I was going to work for the government, work for the EPA, whatever. Yeah. And I just couldn't see myself doing it. And I'd always been an entrepreneur at heart as a youngster. And I wanted to own my own business. And so I thought, well, what could I do that hasn't been done yet? Mm. And so um, there was a gentleman that I was around at the time that was a boxer mm -hmm. and uh, he would say, well, there's, there's boxing gyms, but not everybody's allowed to come into that gym to train if they don't want to be a fighter. Yeah. So if you weren't a fighter, you were not allowed in the boxing gym. This is before it was the, you know, the fitness craze. It was actual real boxing, huh? Right. Yeah. yeah. So you, they would just turn you away at the door yeah. unless you wanted to get hit. And so I thought, well, there seemed to be a lot of people who would want to learn the sport, do it for a workout. You know, maybe I could create something where everybody could come in, but they could legitimately leave them the sport, you know, and Tybo was around at the time. Yeah. And, uh, it was, you know, it had to be different than that. You know, didn't want it to be fluff or yeah. something that wasn't realistic to the sport. Uh, and I thought, I think people, you know, might be ready for actually learning and, you know, still don't have to get hit, but they can, you know, maybe if they want to, this will progress them to step into the boxing ring. Mm. And so that was, you know, where it all came from is putting those, those two together, the, yeah. the kind of like, you know, where they couldn't come in and people wanted to do it. And I wanted to offer something new, something that hadn't been done, which is what we do as entrepreneurs. Yeah. And found uh, you, you found you. a niche. Yeah, found a niche. <laughs> and what, now it's what was crazy. This, by the way? What year? Yeah. It was 1998. 98. Uh, yeah. So in 97 is when I started thinking about it and um, kind of putting all my ducks in a row. And that was really before we had Google and, and those sorts of things. So I went and bought a book called Business Plan for Dummies. <laughs> Big sure. yellow cover, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I wrote a business plan and I went to Bank of America and I got an SBA loan. Um, I had no collateral, no friends and family funding, ABC funding, no rounds of nothing, uh, some boxing rounds. 
but uh, I basically got an SBA loan for forty thousand dollars, and they called it a feel good loan because they're like, well, you really don't have anything for us to take if you don't pay us back. But I pretty much went in there on fire. I presented my business plan and I made them wholeheartedly believe that I was going to make it successful and that I was going to pay them back. Mm. And so I got a loan and then, you know, did all the whole lease negotiations, dealing with getting a building, tenant improvements and all the things I knew nothing about mm. and uh, opened the gym. And was that the, uh, in prime time in Del Paso Boulevard we're talking about? Yeah. And Del Paso Boulevard. And that is the neighborhood. Actually, I was born across the street from there. So when I was born and I was brought back to my home, it was across the street from that gym. And as you know, from that neighborhood, it's a very rough neighborhood. Mm, That was, (laughs) was, I'll say, uh, we call it authentic, right? It was part of the whole authentic boxing experience, right? That's right. It was a full experience. Yeah. So yeah, they had the redevelopment uh, funds available in that area. So I did a lot of research, you know, I wanted to be centrally located, you know, somewhat where, because it was not something that was anywhere. So I thought, well, people are going to come from Roseville. They're going to come from Elk Grove, you know, all these surrounding areas into primetime boxing in, in North Sacramento. And I was right. Um, and they came and I was centrally located and I got uh, some redevelopment help uh, because I was in obviously a, a bad neighborhood and uh, and I made a go of it. And I guess I was pretty good at business. Um, I think the I made a hundred K the first year. That's and amazing. For, yeah, and I mean, I come from a real poor background. So that was pretty astounding. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're talking about $98 too, which is probably about like what, 300 now or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was That's crazy. Great. And so when did you, so you started the business, of course you had people coming in, you had trainers. When did you personally start getting into boxer boxing? Because you're a fierce boxer. Well, you know, I started to become a trainer mm-hmm. before I became a fighter. So we got really busy and on the floor, the head trainer said, I need your help on the floor. You have to assist me. And I thought, oh shit, here we go. (laughs) And, uh, And so I started to learn. I had been around boxing for a while. So I had watched the sport for a very long time which is not the same as doing it, of course, but, um, but you learn a lot by watching, you know, all of the fights all the time and being around, um, you know, boxing gyms and fighters. You get the routine and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I learned a lot from watching Mm. and then I learned how to be a coach and I was coaching, you know, our competitive boxing team, the youngsters, and I'm up in the corner and I'm telling them what to do. Mm. And for me, I felt like it was a little hypocritical, you know, how can I possibly tell them what they're feeling? You know, what is it like? Um, all the emotions you go through, um, the physical, I mean, the turmoil you go through in training. Um, and I thought it was a little hypocritical for me not to have stepped in the ring. And then I decided I wanted to step in the ring and experience it so that I would be a better coach. Yeah. 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 And tell me about that. Don't stop there. Tell us when you got the <laughs> I want to hear about that. Yeah. You know, I like, again, I used my competitive boxing to become a better coach. So it wasn't for me to, there was no intention or I wasn't motivated to go and turn pro and yeah. become, you know, whomever. It's just, that wasn't my mo- my motivation. So it was really more for experience and I boxed up through elite amateurs and boxed in tournaments. Um, And, you know, and that's it, you know, I boxed for about four years and then I wanted to grow the company. I wanted to grow the gyms. And so I opened another location and, and then uh, started franchising and then there was another location open. So it, it just got to the point where, you know, I have a staff and I have gyms to operate and I want to grow. Uh, I can't box at the same time. Oh, of course. <laughs> and you know, it, you, you were correctly, the training is nonstop and you can't run the business and coach and box at the same time. Plus, you know, I mean, what's the future of that, right? You're not going to, um, unless you're going to the Olympics, it's like mm-hmm. the business yeah. side of it is way more longevity, right? Yeah. yeah and, and speaking of the Olympics, women weren't even allowed to box in the Olympics when I was fighting. Mm. So it wasn't even, 
it, I mean, if, if that were the case, I would have been like, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. But it did not until 2012 did women get to box in the Olympics. Wow, so that's crazy. Yeah. Now, yeah. didn't you do some coaching on an Olympic level though? Do I have that wrong? No. Yeah. I, um, I took a young girl under my wing. She was on the USA boxing team. And when I went to the Olympic training center to train with them, uh, to train them, not train with them, uh, I had met her. And when I went back home, she contacted me and she said, you know, I really want to shoot for the Olympics. I want some serious training. I want to train with you. I, you know, I'm just going to move to Sacramento and she lived in uh, Las Vegas at the time. And so she came and um, we started training and we went, you know, we traveled all over to all the Olympic qualifying tournaments and, and it was just her and I, which was great because, you know, it's just these two girls just, you know, going around and and fighting. Testosterone getting in the way, huh? (laughs) (laughs) And I think in all the tournaments we went to, I didn't see one a uh, female coach that was not assisted in some way by a male coach. Um, yeah. So literally it was just her and I, I was the only coach in the corner. And so it was, you know, everybody would kind of look at us very oddly and always asking me if I needed help, of course. Mm. Um, but it was interesting and it was great. It was a great experience. That's cool. So you've had some amazing experiences, not just with business, but you really wanted to live and breathe and experience from, you know, from the client perspective or from the end end user perspective. So that's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought you had been like boxing your whole life the way I saw you throw and stuff. Yeah. And what, what year, I'm trying to remember what year I came in the doors at first um, at prime time. I think maybe 2004 sounds about right. Probably. I know. It seems like forever ago. Yeah. <laughs> the so mosquito. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You remember that, huh? No, my trick would be, uh, of course, you guys would absolutely kill us. And like the workouts were just amazing. But I remember just toiling on the heavy bags and that three minute round feels like it's 20 minutes. So my thing is I would hide behind the bag where you guys couldn't see me. (laughs) You guys would be like, Norm, we have mirrors. We see you. (laughs) Always. Oh, my God. You could never hide in there. No, but such a great experience. Really cool people. And and then down the road, uh, now you live in Los Angeles, of course, and tell us about uh, The Stables. Well, The Stables is a much smaller studio. Um, the clubs up north were, I don't know, 4,000, 4, 5,000 square feet. This one's just over 1,000, so yeah. really different, and it took time for me to get used to it. I really didn't want the space I'm in because I wanted to put a boxing ring in so bad, yeah. and it just is too narrow to do that, but, you know, there were things going on where I had to like, just go ahead and go, you know, I just had to get a space. And so um, it's turned out to be a beautiful space. I love it. And everybody who comes in absolutely loves it. I don't have a boxing ring, but the thing is that I'm not training fighters anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's not really necessary. We do some sparring, but we just use the floor area and it's kind fun, of yeah. section it off. Yeah. Uh, the uh, leases are a little bit more expensive where you're mm-hmm. at than the North, North Sacramento, huh? <laughs> wow yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's kind of ridiculous yeah. I mean yeah it and the people here it's it's very interesting but the people in Southern California are very different than up north mm. it's like being in two different states quite frankly yeah yeah mm-hmm. and so what's uh how is the um the whole theme of course it's authentic boxing but compared to prime time where you started what's like the the vibe in the in the stables now well, it's still, you know, everything is technique driven and based. Um, so I'm still teaching boxing at its truest form. Yeah. Um, and again, if they want to get, you know, hit, then okay, we'll spar. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when they're ready. And uh, yeah, it's, it's basically that, you know, I haven't really, the only thing I've added is the boxing and barbells program. Um, so we've added in weight training within the classes, but it's still, the boxing is still the same. Yeah. There's, you know, it's the foundation, it's the footwork, you know, all the things that I think a lot of coaches unfortunately miss, you know, everybody goes to the hands first and teaches how to throw the hands, but your hands don't do anything without your feet. Uh, So um, I've stayed absolutely traditionally, like foundationally true to, you know, what I started at primetime boxing. Uh, So yeah, it's, it's pretty similar. It's, it's smaller, so I have smaller groups that come in, and I'm not as popular as the, um, what do we call it, uh, boxing, 
there's a name that they call this uh, boxing fitness now, boxing inspired fitness. Oh, geez. So, yeah. yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, there's a coin phrase that people are using out here. Yeah. And I don't do that and I don't turn the lights out and put on a lot of music and make flashing lights and, you know, and dance on stage. I don't do any of that. Whistles, right? yeah. I don't have any bells and whistles for everybody. So, you know, I'm not necessarily the popular, um, you know, club in town. Um, I'm definitely the only female owner um, yeah. that is in town for a boxing club. And is it Santa um, Monica? Do I remember that right? Or Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm in Santa Monica. So well, the doing, weather's great. <laughs> yeah, weather's great. And, you know, going back to the boxing part of it and the, the fundamentals and techniques, no lie, I was so lucky to learn under you at that time because they don't teach that these days. And part of it is because the impatience of the consumer. They're not, they're not saying, I'm giving you six months to teach me. They say, okay, I, I need a great workout, you know, by Thursday. I want to look like I know what I'm doing. And I know <laughs> you guys all about fundamentals, all about footwork, all about get on that line and do it again and again. And, and to this day, you know, I still, I, I still don't like getting hit in the face, but I, I still love boxing training. And as I travel around the world and live around the world, I bring my jump rope with me and I'll just shadow box certain places. Um, and I find like going to a lot of gyms, whether it's boxing gyms, Muay Thai gyms, karate, whatever, People don't know how to throw a punch correctly. No, I bet when you walk in there and, and they see you shadow box, they're like, whoa, you want to fight? A little bit. At first <laughs> they see me and they go, this chubby dude can't box. Like he's going to, you know, and then they see me, you know, throw a couple punches and move and pivot. And they go, all right, maybe he had a good teacher somewhere along the way. <laughs> but it's, it's yeah. important, like you said, the foundation, the fundamentals. And I guess that's in boxing as well as in business, you know, uh, so oh. parallel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so let me t talk now about, of course, you're in L.A. I picture it. I've never been to the stables, but I picture it like all these movie stars want to go in there to work on their abs. But there's probably real people there, too, right? I have no movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It would be great if I had at least one, because what happens out here is that you get one celebrity that does your workout and you blow up. I mean, that's, that's just what it is, but it's, it's just like in business as in everything else. It's all who, you know, Yeah. and you know, I just, I don't get out there and mingle and I don't go to the clubs and you know, I'm not out there trying to socialize and get into the it's scene. Not. No, no, no. Yeah. LA, so gotta, it's just not me. Take a step back from that in LA. Yeah. Just, just be slow and steady and keep it, keep it going. It's going to do great, you know, but uh, the people yeah, who come get an amazing workout. So Tell me about why boxing is such a great workout. Oh, wow. Man, it, yeah. I don't miss the training days getting ready for a fight. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, it's grueling. Um, but also, it can, like, the way I train everybody, they're not preparing for a fight, but I like to give them a lot of pieces of, you know, what the training was like preparing for a fight. So I try to keep it as realistic as possible. I'm kind of an asshole sometimes when I'm coaching. Um, but, you know, and that's boxing, though. It's, you know, it's very gritty. And it's kind of like, you know, look, I just told you to put that right foot to the right of that left foot. Yeah. You need to get it over there. Yeah. You know, so it's, um, it kind of makes them stand to attention. And they're like, oh, shit, I need to get my mind here. You know, yeah. that's what it is, is really trying to get the mind engaged. It's not just about the workout that you get. It's not about, okay, it's an all over body workout, but it's strength training. It's, you know, core, it's, you know, car it's cardio, it's whatever, but it is so much more mental yeah. than it is anything else. And you really learn how to not only make your body do what you want it to do, um, but you also get your mind out of everywhere. So your mind is no longer on work. It's no longer at home. You know, you're just right there in the moment. And I think that's why a lot of people love the training because if you're out there and you're doing a cardio boxing class and you're doing this repetitive fake combination yeah, over and over again, boxing, yeah. <laughs> you know, then, it, you know, then you go, okay, well now I'm starting to think about something else, you yeah. know, because you're just kind of in that repetitious, like, okay, we're just working out you have to have your mind in the game. And so I really try to stay true to that and, and make sure everybody is, they're there. They're physically and mentally there. And I, I do get a lot of people who will say, you know, I initially came in 
to lose weight or get in shape or whatever. And after a month or two, they say, you know what? I love it. And I'm here because I just, I, now I love the sport. Like I want to learn more, you know, I want to get better at throwing my right hand. I want to improve on this. And that partially comes from the coaching. You know, you can't just walk into a place and like all of a sudden they're like appreciate the sport and they want to learn the sport. You have to open their eyes up Mm -hmm. so that they understand that there's a lot to appreciate with the sport. And I like to get them into being fight fans. You know, I'm always telling them you got to watch the fights and, and then they go, Oh shit. Now I understand why you have to slip or, you know, Oh, I see the the pivot or I see the shake. I see, you know, that footwork in the ring. How good the greats are when they watch them or the pros are, huh? Yeah. Yeah, It's interesting with sports, like you talked about the mental part of it and being present. Number one, it's even though it's so extreme and so arduous and everyone's just dying out there, it's it's, um, almost Mm -hmm. meditative because you're breathing. Your number one focus, of course, you're punching, but you're just trying to breathe just to keep going, you know? (laughs) And then you, you hit that pain threshold where your body says no, but your mind knows that there's so much more and you blow right past that. And I think that becomes addictive. And I think that also carries over, you know, not setting your ceiling too low or just on sheer determination blowing past that. I think that carries over in people's other parts of people's lives, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think because in boxing you, you know that like at the end of your round is when you have to push harder and that's when you're the most tired. Yeah. And you know, and if you don't, then you get your ass kicked. Yeah. So it's the same in life, you know, so if you can learn that through boxing and you can push yourself because it is mental, it's just all mental. And then, you know, you get to that point in your life or whatever moment that is. And you're like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so. And you get pissed, you know, you get angry. Yeah. You know? it's like, but the thing is also anyone who's in there, they're going to have different challenges and things. You know, someone sucks at push ups. Someone else is not a good runner. Um, someone like me is not good at anything, you know, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, so everyone's going to face the same challenges. That's, that's, mm-hmm. so that really, you get, you get mad after a while you get, you let your inner warrior out and you're like, no, I'm going to fight back. And that's a healthy thing. You know, um, it is very healthy. Do you guys still have a, a timer of course with the, the rounds and everything? Yeah. 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 I set mine on two minute rounds. So um, no three minutes, but I only do a 30 second rest instead of a minute. So that's great. Yeah. You know, keep it moving. Yeah. And that, you know, once you've been in a boxing gym and you know, that timer, it's almost, you become brainwashed. Like to this day, if I heard it right now, I would just come out swinging or, you know, 30 seconds to go. You, you really give it your all. So it's pretty fun. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Cause a lot of people think, Oh, that it's when they don't understand the bell yet, it does take time for you to understand the different tones of the bell. Yeah. So they hear the 30 second bell and they think that's the stop bell. Oh, yeah. They're like, Oh no, <laughs> that's no. when we got to push. Yeah. Yeah. That's when it's <laughs> go time. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and so who are um, in the sport? Who are your, some of your favorite boxers all time versus fighting now? Ah, uh, okay. So, um, Joe Lewis, um, which is the big mural in your, in the stables, right? Yeah. Way back when, um, fighters used to say that it felt like getting hit with a baseball bat when he hit you. Yeah. So, um, wow. but he was a phenomenal boxer as well. Not just, you know, powerful, um, and a phenomenal person. So there's a whole story about him, but, uh, I've always liked the boxing skill of Oscar de la Hoya. Mm. Um, and, I have always loved watching, um, well, he's passed away now, but Arturo Gotti. Okay. So um, those are a couple of my faves. Uh, the, you know. uh, they were both middleweights, is that right, or, or lighter? Uh, well, welter up to middle. So you know how they start out. They start out lighter, and then yeah. by the time they're getting ready to retire, they're, they're at a heavier weight. And what did you like about them? I mean, was it the movement? Was it their, you know, their mental? What, what sort of did you like about their fight game? Uh, for De La Hoya's movement, defense, um, he was always, it was, he was more of a boxer, you know, and like yeah. people are like, well, yeah, he's a boxer, but you know, you have a boxer who knows how to move, how to, um, you know, counter punch, you know, all of those things. Um, and then you have a banger who is, you know, somebody who kind of sits still in the middle of the ring and just bangs it out. Yeah. Gotti was more of a banger, but with a lot of skill set. Yeah. So, um, and just watching 
how powerful he was on the inside, but still very fluid um, mm. was pretty amazing to watch. Mm. And um, I found out later that the reason he fought on the inside is because he has um, had 60-60 vision. So he was, you know, he couldn't see the guy. <laughs> so oh, he would get really? close. So he was like, I, I don't know, is it the referee or who do I punch here? Huh? Wow. Interesting. Right. He felt more comfortable getting close up. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. And so you mentioned um, shorter rounds, way more activity, shorter rest periods, which of course, scientifically, we know is so incredibly important for, for fitness. It's sort of like the, the hit. Is that how you say it? Or Yeah. 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 It's definitely, yeah. It's where you have a shorter rest period. Um, it's more of a high in interval intensity, you know, uh, training, high interval, high intensity interval training. <laughs> I never know if it's hit or hit it, it, if I'm supposed to stutter on the eye, I don't know. But so you guys, uh, when you're boxing, of course, you're, you know, now we're going to do squats. Now we're going to run around the block. Now push up, you know, like so. And now with barbells as well. So tell us about the whole mixed up workout, not just the boxing. Yeah, so um, with the boxing and barbells, um, it's just a clever name. It doesn't mean we use barbells, but uh, we mostly use dumbbells. And we have, so we'll have a boxing round, then we do a weight round, then we're boxing. So we go back and forth between the two. And then we'll have set exercises that we're going to do. So let's say in that weight, we call it a block, the weight block. We'll do 45 seconds of a weight training exercise, 30 seconds of a conditioning exercise. It could be burpees or something. And then another the 45 word. seconds. Oh, I, I know, it's horrible. <laughs> I hate mountain climbers more than burpees. I don't know why, but I do. Um, and then it's another 45 seconds of uh, weight. So in that two minute block, you're doing weights, conditioning weights, and then boom, you go into the boxing. And back and forth. Matter of fact, I just did one um, live stream Zoom this morning. There you go. <laughs> so. And it's so, uh, it like, is so effective, but it really depletes you so much that everything is 10 times harder. So by the end of it, you know, maybe you could start with 40 push ups by the end of it, just doing three push ups. You're like, oh my God. I mean, it's a great workout. Yeah. Oh yeah. When you combine the, the straight training with the, the boxing, it's, it's crazy. And I, thought about doing it because uh Damien was teaching me how to do weight training I had never weight trained before um in boxing old school like you're taught not to lift weights you're not supposed to lift weights it makes you you know big and slow and all these things yeah. um but really um after I started doing a weight training program after about a year and figuring out how to lift properly and then seeing how it changed my body and obviously, like a lot of the injuries that I had, I couldn't feel them as much anymore. Yeah. But when I would hit the bag, then after I had, you know, really changed my physique, I was way more powerful, but not any slower, yep. not, you know, n nothing changed in a negative way. It was all in a good way. Um, and so I thought, you know, this is awesome. Like, you know, why not add weights with the boxing? So if I went to do, so, you know, a weight, Ex, uh, weight program. Let's say I go to a big box gym and I'm doing weight training, just weight training that day. In between each set uh, that I'm going to have, I'm going to shadow box. Yeah. And so for 30 seconds, I'm going to do an active recovery and I'm going to shadow box. And then I'm going to go back to doing my, um, my reps again. So it just dawned on me that it was the way that it had to be done. <laughs> yeah. And I, I still do the same thing. I hate, you know, if I go to a, a, a box gym and I'm lifting or something, just standing around and waiting in between sets, like I'll jump rope, I'll do jumping jacks, I'll, you know, like you said, shadow box something. So it just keeps, keeps the metabolism going. That's pretty cool. So, and uh, yeah. you, how big is your client base now? Um, what, what sort of, and of course it's, everything's different right now because we're speaking in late May in the zombie era of COVID, right? So. Oh yeah, that's a whole nother can of worms. Um, well, the thing is with uh, boxing and barbells, so that program in itself is, uh, it's not only a workout program, but it's a certification program. So okay. I have a full, you know, course that trainers go through and they get certified to teach. So they go through the whole boxing portion, the weight training, and then putting it together into like specific class formats that are all laid out. So um, right now, since last year, I've certified, you know, over 200 trainers. Wow, and so that's amazing. Yeah. So, and we were just getting real ramped up until yeah. everything shit hit the fan. Um, 
but yeah, so it's it's a program that anybody and everybody can do in a different state, in a different city, if we have the trainers out there doing it, right? So the idea was to definitely get more trainers certified so they could do the teach the program. Uh, you know, not everybody can just come to the stables to do it. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and so, you know, uh, back in the day, what I remember not only was that the boxing experience was so authentic, the training was amazing, I absolutely loved it, but you guys were really good marketers and you've always been very good at business, at promotion. And a lot of that um, is tenacity. I mean, you just get after mm -hmm. it. And so talk a little about that, about the marketing that you've done. Well, it's definitely harder now than it was before. Um, it is so saturated out there, especially with social media. Um, it's not like you're, you're able to get organic reach like you used to. Everything is you know, becoming where it's paid, even if it's on Facebook or it's on Instagram, there's only so much organic you can get out of it now because it's so saturated. Yeah. When I first got on Instagram, I could get like 5,000 likes yeah. and a hundred comments on, you know, a video of a combo. Right. Yeah. And now pff, forget about it yeah. like, because there's so much shit out there. Like it's just so much. So it's a very big challenge now for the marketing before I could, Oh, let me print up some flyers and you know, let me stand out here in front of this event and pass out flyers or do, um, you know, mass mail marketing or, or things like that. Um, now that doesn't work. None of that works anymore. Um, and now, you know, you've got your email list and you're trying to do email marketing, but what happens is Google, you know, thinks that it's spam. So Google doesn't even allow like 30, I don't know, 50% of your emails, even though they've subscribed to go to their email, it's going in their junk box. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's a really, really tough nowadays. Um, it's come down to trying to like collaborate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're staying local to really get together with some of your local business owners and try to work on different events with yep. them and, um, you know, cross promote with them. It's yeah. I mean, That's I wish I could I say that. Really Cause I'm in that business too, where I, you know, since I left Sacramento in 2011, I've done nothing but digital marketing and blog writing. And it used to be, you know, you could write a blog and you have a, you know, one in 50 chance of it going viral and, you know, like thousands <laughs> of people reading it. And now it's like, no, now we need a hundred blogs just for some keywords, just to try to, you know, but I also think that though things get super saturated in the digital space, like you said, with social media and stuff, there's always other opportunities and the pendulum swings back a little bit. So the relationships, the networking, the going to events, the actual human interaction, um, mm -hmm. that's something that a lot of these, these young bucks, they don't understand. So I think that's, and especially these days when things open up again, that might be more important than ever, huh? It is. And, um, you know, and it's something that re I was reminded of this. Um, I was reaching out to some of the business owners that are on the same street as the, the studio and whether they were in fitness or they were just restaurants or whatever and reaching out to those owners talking about, you know, Hey, have you written a letter to your landlord to ask for a rent reduction yet? You know? Yeah. Uh, and then just in those conversations, you know, we start talking about, okay, well, when we open back up, you know, let's do, you know, 15% off of pizza if they come and do a boxing class and vice versa. So it just started to turn into this community thing in the CrossFit gym that's way down the street. They said, oh, you know, we have 300 members. And so sometimes we'll just run our, our people down there and do a boxing class. How cool is so, that? Yeah. So it's, it is, it's about getting back out there. And I, you know, I'll be honest, you know, I was not doing that like I should be. And so something like this, the COVID coming in and, you know, it changes the game, right? So you, you start doing things that um, you weren't doing before. Um, and it's sometimes for sheer survival, but it ends up being a good thing. Someone smart's going to write a book, uh, you know, uh, COVID marketing or post COVID marketing really, and how everything changes. I mean, it's not going to be me, but someone is, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> definitely a lot of things have changed and it's probably, you know, who knows how long this whole semi new normal will be, but um, things will probably alter. Like I know commercial properties, people working from home, like it may be permanent, some of this stuff. Um, but I think oh, there are yeah. these opportunities and you're, you're always a hustler. You're always researching, reaching out, 
trying to step up your game. So I know you'll be fine and you'll innovate, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, and, you know, we're doing stuff online, of course, you know, everybody's had to, had to pivot to go to that point, but the other challenge is for fitness, you know, being in the fitness space, there are a lot of uh, Instagram influencers or, or whatever, or larger companies that have a lot of investment money and they're offering free workouts on Instagram, right? So, you know, for the smaller studios, when you're going, okay, well, I'm only charging $10 for a class to Zoom with me, which is a killer deal. Yeah, that's insane. They're like, well, I can get it for free over here, you know, and it devalues it so much. And that leads me to, you know, um, in, you know, you might not know anything about this, but ClassPass. And ClassPass is one of those companies that has come in and just eaten up the smaller studios and devalued the trainers, devalued the studios. I mean, right now they're obviously hurting. I don't know if they're going to make it through this, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough if, if people are giving stuff away for free yeah. uh, because you know, you can't, you can't live on love. That's for sure. No. And like you said, it, it just devalues everything, makes it harder. You know, it, it basically, it makes those elite influencers, whether they earned it or not, they're the ones, you know, the, the 1% of 1% make some money, but the other hardworking people out there. Um, so yeah, that shift is important, but uh, tell us now about, um, as a female business owner, what challenges today along the way, like how is that a little <laughs> bit different or yeah, what, what obstacles have you seen? Whew. Well, <laughs> um, you know what, in all of the things that I've seen and I've experienced, um, the obstacles I've had to overcome, the one thing that I always really stay true to is that I've tried to use being a woman at, as my advantage mm. so that people go, oh, that's really odd. Like there's this woman, this petite woman who's in the boxing space. And, uh, and so I thought, well, I'll use that to my advantage. So then, you know, I write press releases to, you know, get people interested in like, oh, who is this? this lady over here doing boxing, you know, she doesn't even look like a boxer or whatever. So I've used it over the years to my advantage. Um, but I mean, the challenges are real, of course. Um, if we focus on them, obviously, then, then they become, you know, something that hinders us. But early on, going to get my first building for the gym, you know, there were nothing but mostly male real estate agents and would not give me the time of day. They would just look at me like, yeah, right. You're going to open a boxing gym. Who in the hell is this, you know, sh this girl, I was 26 years old. And they were like, whatever. And they just didn't give me the time of day. They were not respectful. Um, you know, they just treated me like I was completely ignorant to anything. Yeah. And, you know, and then there was this woman, Joanne Shapiro, I still remember her name and she was a real estate agent and she came in and she helped me find a building. So it was like that moment I was like, wow, you know, this, this is a real thing. Like I'm going to have a problem. But it took a female commercial real estate agent to first take you seriously. It's not even you found one of the men and yeah. And such a, not only finding the building, but in such a macho man sport. I mean, oh, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. You talk about people walking into the, the gym in Sacramento and immediately saying, you know, I want to talk to your trainer. I want to talk to your owner. Um, you know, they would call me the front desk girl. Um, I oh, mean, oh, the secretary, the, oh, you know, it was like oh, on and on oh, and oh, on. Man. Yeah. It, yeah. So I, I really didn't get taken seriously until I actually trained somebody or they, you know, would, they would try to school me on something that had to do with boxing. And then when I <laughs> schooled them, mm -hmm. they go, Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> she knows her yeah. shit. So, but you know, it's always this, like have to prove myself kind of thing, which is shitty, you know, like, but I think there's just so many women out there that go through that as, as business owners. And I'll tell you, even as a boxing coach, the unfortunate thing is that it still is looked at as a man's sport to where if you're not a man teaching it, then you're probably not teaching it properly. So even for women to come and train with me, um, there are plenty of women who, have opted not to because in their mind, because we have already been like pre, you know, programmed to this, yeah. that they need to be trained by a man because it's a man's sport and he's going to know best. 
I still run into that to this day, Norm. So you are a, a harder trainer than most of the dudes out there. <laughs> when it was your turn on the floor, I was like, oh no, we're in for it. So I could have to that. <laughs> I was listening for the guys, you know? Oh my God. So funny. It's true. But you know, it's, yeah. So it's, it's definitely been hard and even dealing with manufacturers overseas. I took my photo off of my WhatsApp and I saw a complete change. That's incredible. I mean, I was getting, I was getting treated like, I mean, it, it was, it was pretty wild, like how I was treated with my photo up there. And I, it didn't even dawn on me because I don't think about it. And then I was like, wait a minute, they can see my photo. And I took it off. And then after that, a different tone of the conversation. And these are yeah. things that guys take for granted because we don't even think about it, you know? And so Damien yeah. now, does he see all this stuff that's happening and hear the stories? Does he get fired up too about it? You know what? He's kept me pretty level headed because um, he's a kind of guy that is like, you know what? It is what it is. Like you, if you get, if you get mad about it, like trolls, like if I get trolls on my Instagram or I get trolls on my YouTube, because you know, I'm this girl up there boxing and then everybody want to tell me how to do it. Yeah. Oh no, it's not done that way. It's just, these people have, they don't even know what boxing is all about. Yeah, they've never the fought, couch. never coached. They're on the couch trying to tell you how, how it is, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then I'll get upset and he's like, why do you get upset? They don't know as much as you. They're obviously ignorant to it. So just, you know, block them or whatever. They're never going to be, those people aren't going to be your clients, your customers, your advocates, your support, you know, your tribe, your support network. So forget them, you know? Yeah. Don't waste your energy. How about with um, other maybe young women now who are opening business or becoming entrepreneurs, maybe not, of course, boxing or fitness, but just anything in general, is there any advice you would give, give them? <sighs> Well, I would say, um, don't give up, only give up when you know that it's time to throw in the towel. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, there's a point where you get to, if you have been working really, really hard on something and you're pushing and you're pushing, you're pushing and you're out of resources and you're out of energy and it's completely deflated you and you've turned into a different person, then move on. But if it's just that things are slow, and yeah. then there's a little spark of something like, oh, I just got that account. Use it for your fire and then keep pushing mm. because it will happen. It's a slow, slow burn a lot of times, you know? So, um, but there's just, it's a real hard thing to figure out when it is time to throw the talent. You know, like that's why a lot of us have coaches, right? In the corner. Mm -hmm. And they're like, uh-uh, kid, <laughs> we throw on the talent. See it objectively, whether it's business or fighting, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, reach out to other female entrepreneurs, um, yeah, to, support network, right? Yeah. yeah. Really, really try to, because that way they can give you like honest feedback. You know, you don't want, you know, your best friend and your best friend's like, Oh my God, this is so awesome. Yeah. You're fine. Whatever. But get some honest feedback and it goes both ways. Cause you can have friends and family who will shit all over everything you do, which is, is pretty much, Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. and you can use that for your fire. You know, yeah, you can yeah. have a lot of naysayers and and push even farther because somebody's telling you you can't do it. So yeah. whatever it is, use it to fuel everything and to keep pushing forward. So That's yeah, I always say like just just don't give up. It's gonna be slow. It's gonna be you're gonna be discouraged. I get discouraged almost every day. You know, but what are you gonna do about it? You just gotta get it out of your head and keep pushing because anything is possible. Yeah. That's the whole thing about life. It just depends on how much energy you're going to put into that. So you, you can do whatever you want to do. And do you love the training and the, the toil and the hard days and the early mornings? Or do you just love the idea of you standing up there being the champion, but don't want to put in the work? That's a clear indicator of whether you're in the right business or not, right? It's like if, yeah. you, if you love the journey <laughs> and the process and the tough stuff that goes into it, then you know you're you're in it for the long haul, yeah. right? And then and I won't say necessarily like it because we don't always like yeah 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 that shit right. Uh -huh. But 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 you understand that that those are things that have to be done. Just like when you wake up, you have to brush your teeth or whatever. You know you have to take a shower every day. You have to understand that those are things that have to be done mm -hmm. no matter what. 
you might not even think about it. You might dislike it. You might like it. It doesn't matter, but it has to be done. Yeah. That's awesome. And those are the fundamentals, right? And that's why, yeah. Fantastic. I love it. How could people, whether it's uh, someone who wants to come to the stables, someone who wants to talk boxing with you, um, when they make the movie of your life, of course, or <laughs> an entrepreneur, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, let's see. Um, well, I guess if they go to my personal Instagram, kind of everything's on there. My, uh, the boxing of barbells and the stables is there. So, um, if they go to Carrie Lee Williams and it's Carrie, like Carrie Grant, mm -hmm. C A R Y L E E Williams, uh, pretty much everything is on my link tree to find everything. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. I'll definitely, uh, tell everyone to go over there and appreciate your time. If you have like 30 seconds more, can you do me a favor? Can you hook, uh, help my left hook? Cause it's not so good these days, huh? <laughs> Let me see it. <laughs> I'm you don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. But I, I do, do. I do. After with, this, I want to see your hook. You know, with the 90 degrees. You know. oh, okay. Sorry, there you go. Right. Oh, but we just got to get I, a little more fluidity in there. That's of all. Of course, of course. I do have the heavy bag in there. So one of these days when I build up a little bit, I'll take a, a video and you can critique it. huh? Oh, please. I would love to see it. <laughs> do it soon. Carrie, thank you so much. I appreciate you. huh? Oh, you too. All right, Norm. I'll see you soon.